And there you have it, the highlights of the match between Nigeria and Egypt, where the Super Eagles of Nigeria recorded a 1-0 win over the Pharaohs of Egypt. An impressive way to start the African Cup of Nations, where the Super Eagles of Nigeria will be gunning for a fourth title. And it's on that note, I welcome you to today's edition of the Arena. I'm Samson Oledi. I'm not doing this alone. I've got Ademi Adesonya, a sports pundit, who is joins me over the phone. Ademi, good afternoon. Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining the show. Now, let's delve into it quickly. The Super Eagles of Nigeria yesterday, I mean, defeated the Pharaohs of Egypt against all odds. What do you make of the performance? Uh, it, was a, it was a good performance. Uh, it was good to see good play with tempo, with aggression, and playing on the front foot. Uh, it was a very refreshing performance. And I think uh, it's a performance that we can build on going forward in the tournament. Let's let's look at the team's performance still. Where where exactly do you think Austin Guavon has impacted upon the team that translated to the victory yesterday? Um, I think it's particularly staying true to our core values, to our core strength, which is uh, pace, power, use of the wings. Yes. Uh, you know, just sticking to the traditional elements that are in our football. I think that's what it more or less as introduced. Okay, where, where did it go wrong for the pharaohs of Egypt? Because they just didn't show up to the party at all. Um, maybe a little bit of uh, formation and their overall approach. Um, Usara, as far as the law people are concerned, the system is clear, works better in the system. And yes. that system has to include certain set of, or internal caliber of players. But at the same time, Credit has to go to the Super Eagles for ensuring that um, they didn't have the same or have any impact in the game or any Egyptian as a whole have any impact in the game. Okay, lo looking at the performance yesterday, where wh which areas do you think the Super Eagles can improve on going into the next match so that they consolidate on this win? It's against the minor quite all right, but they can't be complacent. Well, it's one of the areas I think we, we, we can work better on has to do with the delivery. Uh, final balls have to be a lot better. Okay. I think that um, also the fact that we're playing inverted wingers, we need to get our full backs to, you know, as much as possible join the attack and give an option, you know, have two the one situations against uh, the opposition's defense or the opposition's full backs. Um, I also think that in terms of the substitutions that we make, have to be substitutions that ensure that we maintain the tempo that we're starting with. So, like, once we're in the second half and the defense were kind of trying to come up in the ascendancy, the, the substitutions we made kind of slowed down the, the pace. And our pressing ability. So I think that um, the substitutions going forward should be yes, players will be tired because the weather is hot, it's very humid, they will be tired, but let's keep the same level of aggression. Okay, let's see how it pans out for the Super Eagles of Nigeria as they try to get out of the group. They've done the good job of defeating the Pharaohs of Egypt and then Guinea-Bissau and Sudan should come easy, although definitely there are upsets when it comes to the African Cup of Nations. Now, they, I mean, let's look at yesterday's matches. Let's start with the defending champions, Algeria. Shockingly, they couldn't defeat Sierra Leone. This is a team that um, had crisis co going into competition. The coach was even threatened, received death threats regards his AFCON list, yet they couldn't get a win. Uh, Ozzy are quite disappointed. They couldn't break down to a group, but then, like I always say, the first games are always very cagey. 
Yes. Uh, very strict affairs and, you know, the so-called smart things also didn't come to play. They Definitely. They can impact, so they're, they're always going to, you know, lie down for uh, the defensive champions to walk over them. So you have to also give them a lot of credit for them. The so-called bigger teams is a responsibility for them to find the cutting edge. I think that was what was lacking for Jira yesterday. Okay, um, let's look at the other match that took place yesterday, and that's um, the one that concerns us, Sudan against Guinea-Bissau. It ended goalless. I think um, it was a drab encounter, but the talking point was um, the goalkeeper, a shrine who saved the penalty late on in the match. What do you expect for both teams going forward, especially as, you know, on the back of what we saw last night? Guinea-Bissau would ruin the opportunity, the missed opportunity of getting three points. Yes. Uh, they missed the penalty, they stopped the post twice. Uh, that, 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 that's been one of the greatest, or the highest level of bad luck. Bad luck, yeah. Uh, but at the same time, one point on the board, they kind of have a bit of advantage, and, and so that both of them are going to be very difficult to play against. Because now, in the context of the group, Egypt are the one that have all the work to, to do. do. So uh, I don't think they will push over us. Okay, um, let's look at today's matches. I mean, we have three um, matches today as well at the African Cup of Nations. Let's start with Ivory Coast against Equatorial Guinea. What do you expect? The golden generation of Didier Drogba, Yao Yaturi are no longer there. And then this generation of Ivorians would like to consolidate themselves. They're not going to the World Cup, so um, the African Cup of Nations is just like some sort of... Um, you know, re how do you even put it? They are trying to redeem themselves, yes. Well, first of all, I think I like the fact that there's a bit of continuity with the Andorra team on the coaching side. So, from Elvin Renard, yes, they had a as assistant to Elvin Renard. I think they have a good mix. They have a good mix, but um, it'll be interesting to see how that mix works out. I'm, of course, always a uh, very good team going forward. Definitely. Um, Yes. So it will be first to see how much supply and service you will get uh, to push the agenda for the uh, elephants forward. Okay, the other big match today, uh, uh, it's arguably the biggest, talking about Tunisia against Mali. Almost evenly balanced when it comes to, you know, paper, but on the field of play is what counts, 90 minutes. Tunisia and Mali, what should we be expecting? Mali is very dangerous, but I really hope they can have a good tournament. Former champions. Yes. Um, you know, I expect a really good game. I'm hoping for a game that will entertain, you know, at least something close to what we got from the Super Eagles game uh, yesterday. Against the Jeeps? Uh, the Mandans are crafty opposition, of course. We don't know what to expect when we see South Africans. So I'm expecting a really good game. Hopefully, it provides some, uh, some form of entertainment. Okay, Ademi, let me put you on the spot. Predictions regards to these matches. Let's start with Ivory Coast against Equatorial Guinea. Okay. Um, Tunisia Mali, the big one. Tunisia Mali, something tells me might be a one one draw. Okay. And um, you have um, the last one as well in the mix. What do you expect from that? Um, I think we might just have another low scoring affair in that one. Maybe another draw might just be uh, on the cards. Okay, they're talking about Mauritania against Gambia. I don't think that's a match um, that would attract so much viewership or, you know, when it comes to um, today's matches. But there you have it. Gambia is very, also very, very defensive. You've got to be here on the street. So, you know, you have to give them a lot of credit. So. But I think that uh, that just looks like it has to draw written all over it. Oh, okay. Um, there you have it. You have Adeyemi um, Adesanya helping you out with our prediction games when it comes to the African Cup of Nations. Remember that the only time for you to be able to qualify as a winner on the show is that you should follow us on our social media handles at iBrand TV and uh, that's on Instagram, iBrand underscore TV on Twitter and on YouTube. Like and subscribe to iBrand TV or iBrand TV Media. Now, for the three matches today, you have to predict correctly the scoreline of two out of the three to stand a chance to win amazing prizes. You have Tunisia Mali, you have Ivory Coast against Equatorial Guinea, and you have Mauritania against Gambia. Those are the three matches. Once you are able to correct and predict correctly two 
of those three matches in terms of their scoreline, you'll win yourself a very wonderful prize coming to you from iBrand TV. Now, Adeyemi is still with me. I will delve into European club football as quickly as possible. Great matches are holding tonight when it comes to, you know, England and every other league. Now, in England, it's the Carabao Cup semi-final second leg. Spurs have a mountain to climb against Chelsea, trailing by two goals to nil. Adeyemi, do you think Conte and his words can get it done this time around? I don't think they can. Uh, Spurs already have issues with uh, concerning uh, injuries to Son, uh, lack of transfer activity. So there's a bit of a difficult uh, vibe coming out of uh, uh, the new White Army. So I think Chelsea will be no good to get into the final of the Carabao Cup. Uh, and, and, and Chelsea seem like they've put, you know, they've uh, moved past the entire Lukaku saga, so to speak. Yeah, well, they have to. They have to. Uh, guys apologize. Very simple. Let's move on and let them be talking on the pitch. Okay. Um, let, let's, let's move over to Spain. And um, it's the Spanish Super Cup. And it's an El Clasico between Barcelona and Real Madrid. Gone were the days when, um, you know, both teams boasted of um, superstars in terms of Cristiano Ronaldo as well as Lionel Messi. It's a new age, a new generation. What do you expect? Barcelona on the... Do you even call it redevelopment or what exactly is happening in the new camp? Well, we're a Clasico, even if it's uh, a game between the other teams. Well, yes. It's going to be a start. I expect Real Madrid to do well to get a victory in that one. Uh, they seem to be the better place team. They're doing a lot better at all the league. They have Benzema and uh, Benicius. Junior, and yes. I, so I expect Real Madrid to, to get a victory in that one. Okay, and um, just before I let you go, Adeyemi, let, let's look at the Italian um, Super Cup. That's also holding tonight, and it's between Inter Milan and Juventus. Juventus are not doing quite well in the league this season. That fifth, Inter Milan are on course to defend their title, though they have, you know, city rivals AC Milan breathing down their neck. Do you expect Inter Milan to get one better than um, Juventus, or you expect Juve to win their first title of the season and probably kickstart, you know, their season afresh? Well, on the strength of Juve's performance in the game against Roma over the weekend, they oh. have something, the platform to build. Definitely. Uh, Yes. They had that 16 different goal scorer. This is everything that is able to have goals all around the team is a dangerous team. I think it's a fun place to win this one, and I won't be surprised if they do. Okay, that's the Emi Adesanya. Thank you so much for joining the show. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Samson. Thank you so much. Yes, we're going to break right now. When we return, we'll delve into the world of business. We'll look at the commercial aspect of sports. Please do stick around. Most people don't understand the magic of the perfect skin. The allure of the well-pampered skin. We bounce from skincare products to skincare products. From spa to spa. Looking for that ideal solution. I found the solution. It's Blemiviv Skin Care and Spa. My name is Neil and I'm proud to be a part of the Blemiviv family. Swift Dry Cleaners Limited Professional Dry Cleaners Best in dry cleaning and laundry services That meets the needs of our consumers yeah. Swift
Swift Dry Cleaners. Thank you for staying tuned. It's still the arena. Now it's time to give you some sports business stories. I would start in the world of golf, where LinksDAO, the centralized autonomous organization's founders, are creating a modern golf and leisure club through the sale of non-fungible tokens and an eventual purchase of an actual golf course. The organization's idea appears both popular and lucrative. In one day, LinksDAO sold about 9,000 membership non-fungible tokens what a total of about $11 million. The NFTs allow for community access, governance, and a wide variety of perks and games in the near term and are the key to membership at the future golf course. The company will reportedly use the funds to purchase the golf course. The group also has a Discord channel and it chooses a golf course that the company hopes to purchase and open by early 2023. Now the channel Discord has more than 12,000 members. Are still talking business, the High Court in London ruled that Chinese broadcaster PPTV must pay the English Premier League at least $213 million following a nearly year-long rights battle. PPTV failed to pay two installments to the league last year, which resulted in the English Premier League terminating the three-season deal worth roughly $650 million. The broadcaster attributed its missed payments to pandemic-related schedule changes. The deal, which would have been the Premier League's biggest overseas contract, only lasted one season. As part of the contract termination, money from the rights was passed down to the league's 20 clubs. Judge Peter Foster said that just because unforeseen events may transpire does not mean the court will rewrite the parties' bargain and impose different terms. He ordered two payments of $210 million and $2.6 million from PP Life Sports International, which is PPTV's parent company, along with legal costs and interests. Sonin purchased PPTV for $420 million in 2013. Three years later, the company purchased the minority stake in Serie A's Inter Milan as part of a $307 million deal. Sonin reportedly posted $642 million in third quarter net losses. And finally, in terms of sports business, Bayern Munich were the only champions from Europe's top eight leagues to make a profit in the 2020-2021 season as the coronavirus pandemic hit European football, a report has revealed. The KPMG Football Benchmarks European Champions report analyzed the finances of the champions of England, Spain, Germany, Italy, France, the Netherlands, Turkey, and Portugal. Bayern's 2020-2021 profits after tax was 1.8 million euros. Meanwhile, Premier League champions Manchester City were the only club to see their income increase compared to the previous season. City registered a total income of 644 million euros, the highest figure among the eight league winners, including Bayern Munich, Atletico Madrid, Ajax Amsterdam, Sporting Lisbon, Lille, Inter Milan, and Besiktas. City's income helped by prize money from reaching the Champions League final and increased broadcasting revenue was 96 million euros higher than 2019-2020 um, season and also more than the 2018-2019 season, which was the last pre-COVID season. Meanwhile, Serie A champions Inter Milan recorded a net loss of 245.6 million euros in 2020-2021, which is the highest ever recorded by an Italian football club while Spanish champions Atletico Madrid went from a net loss of 1.8 million euros in the 2019-2020 season to 111.7 million euros in the 2020-2021 season. Although City's revenue increased, the club also recorded a net spend of 294 million euros on transfers and have one of the biggest wage bills in football, which stands at 351 million pounds. The English champions also have the highest squad market value in the world, at 1.2 billion euros, with Manchester United and Chelsea, the only other clubs, hitting the 1 billion euro mark. 
And that's it in regards to sports business. We'll go on a very short break. When we return, we'll delve into the world of other sports when Novak Djokovic has made a revelation. Please do stick around. Most people don't understand the magic of the perfect skin. The allure of the well-pampered skin. We bounce from skincare products to skincare products. From spa to spa. Looking for that ideal solution. I found the solution. And it's Blemiviv Skin Care and Spa. My name is Neil, and I'm proud to be a part of the Blemiviv family. Thanks for staying tuned. Now we're hitting home stretch on the arena for today's edition of the show. I would have to talk about other sports starting from the world of basketball where the Memphis Grizzlies ensured that the second match of um, Clay Thompson since his return didn't end on a good note as they made it 10 wins in their last game talking about a franchise record for the Memphis Grizzlies and um, it was Starman Jamorant who led scoring for the team in there talking about the Grizzlies um, with 29 points and he was assisted by Zaire Williams as well as Tyrus Jones who contributed 17 points apiece as um, the bench of Grizzlies also ensured that the Grizzlies made a franchise record of 10 successive wins and the win also catapulted the team to the fourth spot when it comes to the Western Conference standings behind the Phoenix Suns, the Golden State Warriors as well as the Utah Jazz franchises. Now for the Warriors, this is the second match of Klay Thompson since his return, having spent 31 months out in, on, um, on the sidelines due to various injuries such as an anterior cruciate ligament that he tore as well as an Achilles um, um, tendon that he tore as well. But Steph Curry um, top scored for the Warriors with 27 points, while Klay Thompson on the second match of his return was able to just score 14 points. And um, it must be said that the Golden State Warriors missed Draymond Green, who, um, the 2017 NBA Defensive Player of the Year, who is nursing a calf injury. He couldn't play in today's match. Um, in the, yeah, in today's match because it was at the wee hours of this morning. And um, it just means that he would probably still sit out you know, for road trips to Milwaukee, where Golden State Warriors will have to face NBA champions, defending champions Milwaukee Bucks, and then there's still Chicago Bulls to play in the mix. So um, let's see if Draymond Green would return to help the Warriors back to wins but for the Golden State Warriors it's back to back um, it, it's a loss for Clay Thompson on the second game ever since the return to the NBA but it's good to see him back on the court now let's see if he's able to get a good run of form when it comes to successive games under his belt and more importantly let's begin to see the splash once again remember he and Steph Curry are regarded as the splash brothers when it comes to the world of basketball and that's due to the ability to drain three pointers from virtually everywhere of the court now we'll move away from um, basketball to the world of tennis where Novak Djokovic has been in the news for several weeks now or several days it must be said but the latest about Novak Djokovic is his revelation that um, he broke protocols or he broke isolation guidelines when it comes to you know the COVID-19 um, you know pandemic or virus as it were and he also admitted that um, his agents made mistakes on immigration forms he filled to Australia and um, this is just um, another um, drama that is unfolding in terms of um, the visa saga that saw him detained in an hotel facility for several days before he won a court appeal on Monday which um, warranted his release and as you can see on your screen he was able to train immediately after the court freed him but nevertheless Novak Djokovic can still be deported from Australia as um, the Australian Immigration Minister Alex Hawke owns, um, old, holds the um, discretion to be able, and holds the power, you know, to be able to deport him on the basis of visa grounds. Now, 
for all of the noise in the media regards vaccine exemptions and all, it must be said that the gross that the um, immigration officials or the Australia border officials had with Novak Djokovic was not about the vaccine exemption. As a matter of fact, two independent bodies certified the vaccine exemption, you know, certificates that he brought along with him to Australia. The gross was regards the visa he applied. The visa upon which he arrived at Australia does not grant vaccine exemptions to its holders. And that's where, you know, the issue lies. The judge who ruled on Monday simply ruled in favor of Djokovic that he wasn't given more time to explain why he came to Australia on that visa. But now, the um, with his recent admission that, you know, he um, filled in, according to him, he made mistakes, his agent made mistakes on the immigration form, and um, which definitely is regarded as immigration fraud. And, um, you know, that's something that the Australian authorities will probably consider when making the decision. The um, immigration minister for Australia, Alex Hawke, is yet to decide if he will deport um, Novak Djokovic or not. But for Australia, a city or a country where they have perhaps one of the strictest, um, strictest, I beg your pardon, um, COVID-19 rules in the world, it's um, the, the pressure is piling on the government to take a harsh stance against one of the world's most popular athletes when it comes to, you know, the world of sports. And um, let's see how this pans out. Two things Novak Djokovic admitted on social media during his post on Instagram is that one, um, he, he broke isolation protocols. He tested positive for COVID-19 on the 16th of December and on the 17th, he was still out for a function where he met with people and children. And um, the second thing he admitted was that there were errors in the immigration form a field where he was asked if he had traveled over the last 14 days upon his entry to Australia and he denied that he hadn't traveled whereas he traveled to Serbia his native um, country as well as um, Spain before hitting Australia so all of these may just work against him it's yet to be seen and um, it would be a big loss if he's deported because he has won the Australian Open nine times and is seeking a tenth title there where he's the defending champion the Australian Open begins on the 17th of January which is just five days away so the controversy continues. Let's see how that pans out. It's on that note. I say thank you so much for joining us on today's edition of the show. It's been amazing. Thank you to Ademi Adesanya who joined me over the phone. Couldn't make it down to his studio, but was still able to join me over the phone. Thanks to um, the production crew who made this possible. And to you, the viewers out there, you guys make this show what it is. Talking about being the best sports show on the planet. Thank you so much. Remember, you can stand a chance to win amazing prizes from us. And that's about you predicting correctly th two out of the three AFCON matches for today. You have Mauritania against Gambia. You have um, Tunisia against Mali. And you have Ivory Coast against Equatorial Guinea. So send in your predictions. The only time and condition to this is that you follow us on our social media handles. iBrand TV on Instagram. iBrand underscore TV on Twitter. And on YouTube, iBrand TV or iBrand TV Media. Like and subscribe. And you stand a chance to win yourself a wonderful prize. I'm Samson Lee. They have been your host. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.